when they have a digital twin, they can connect back to that customer. So they can say, for example, hey, I didn't want to give you a discount because you're like my loyal customer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CMO Stories podcast, season two, episode 25. My name is Yuri Bilas, and I'm your podcast host. And today I'm very excited to be joined by Marina. Hi, Marina. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you. What about yourself? Yeah, always when I can record podcast, I'm happy. <laughs> and it's, I know on your side, it's sunny. Here also there is a bit of sun, but could be better. But actually, yeah, I love the start of the new year. It always gives some new energy and some new opportunities. But guys, if you don't know Marina, let's start by introducing her. So Marina Marchanova, actually, she found her first successful startup at the age of 21. And she grew that to a $1 million run rate with 2.5K initial yeah. investments. Expanded that to 80 cities with over 40,000 distribution locations, including clients like Starbucks, Metro Cash and Carry, and small coffee shops in New York City, like Lion's Milk in Williamsburg, and she's exited in 2020. And today, she's the founder and CEO of Seam, and that's a US-based fashion tech startup, and it's the first to create digital twins of real-world fashion collections for virtual worlds. The platform bridges the gap between real-world fashion and virtual worlds. And this is empowering users to fully express their identity in every reality. Wow, this sounds exciting, Marina. Thank you for such a great introduction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you explain a bit the concept behind Seam and how it's different from other digital fashion platforms? That's a great question. And as you mentioned, we're bringing real world fashion into digital world because we truly believe that there should be a connection between those two worlds and that Basically, digital fashion is like the new e-commerce for fashion brands. So this is the switch that has to happen. And we're helping to connect the dots instead of just creating digital fashion on its own in the virtual world. Okay. It's, I think it's also a really exciting world that we live in today with all these possibilities. But so how does Seam help real life fashion brands to expand their reach and establish a presence in the virtual world. I can probably begin with a short story on how we discovered the problem itself. I was looking at the trends around a few years ago, a trend of a lot of large brands having partnerships with metaverses or with video games like Fortnite. And I saw that there is something that's off in a way because yeah. done for a short period of time, it's, it looks great. It's amazing. And they really have the audience, but it's not done in like a consistent way and um, also the users so for example if you're in the metaverse or you play fortnite you play gta like any video game it's really hard for yourself to express the way you want to look or maybe the way you look in real life in those worlds because there is just not much content in there right and the best content is fashion is your self-identity in a way so everything that you wear in real life t talks about yourself so we were just thinking that there should be something like that connects the dots and that puts like real world items into those worlds. And, but there is a thing that it's quite complicated for the fashion industry because they're just not, the tech is not their specialty, right? So we realized that they need guidance and we can help them provide them with this guidance. And they also need the tech integration. So essentially our product is the app for the consumer is the app where you can get your digital suit. So for example, you came to a store, I don't know, any store, imagine your favorite store. You came there and you got, for example, a backpack. With this backpack, you get a QR code that's connected to the serial number. So you know, A, this is the real backpack from your favorite brand. And B, by scanning this QR code via your app, you get a digital twin. So the exact copy looks like a real one in your app. And from there, you can say, hey, I want to use it in, for example, the central end. I want to play the central and I want to wear this backpack in the central one. So this is exactly how we connect on the technical level. I don't know. Did I answer your, did I answer your question? 
Yeah, yeah, it's of course, it's new for everyone. It's interesting to hear how it is working. I'm asking to myself, what is actually the process behind it to create such a digital connection? You talked about this mobile app, but how is this process behind? How is this go? Or is this? So we have in-house 3D team that's doing all the models and that's in charge of creating the models that A, are approved by brands and B, look like moves closer to the real ones. And there is a lot of tech on the back when it comes to the app, to the integrations. Uh, so we're official partner, for example, of the Central and, and it takes some time to like actually do the magic. But for consumers, the way it looks is just basically like you know, pressing one button and getting it out there. Yeah, the easier it is, the better, of course, because in this world that we live in, like sometimes for users, it's a hurdle, an obstacle to use it because it's too complex. But if it's just one button, it works with an app or whatever, that makes it way friendly. And it's, I think, one of the success factors of your business. But how is Seam also helping out these fashion brands to conduct research and testing on new designs? How can it help? them improve also their digital presence for these brands. So how, we, how what are the benefits for the brands actually? That, that's a great question. Yeah, we actually realized that digital fashion can be helpful in real world, no matter how like weird it sounds, but there is a big problem for fashion brands that, for example, you came to your favorite brand store, for example, in New York City, right? And you got something with a credit card. And then in one week you fly to Hong Kong and you buy something with cash. And the third week, you go to the website, I don't know, Farfetch or any like multi-brand website, and you get this another item from the same brand online. And this brand never knows that this is yourself. This is the same person. Not talking about yourself specifically, yeah. but this is the same person. And for them, it's really hard to understand those specific transactions, it's hard for them to understand the customers at the end of the day because you don't have the whole picture, right? Yeah. Uh, so with digital twins, for example, if you got a digital twin for each item that you purchased, the brand eventually would know that you have all of them in your closet. And it means that they can A, produce better collections for you, B, they can better know what you're looking for so they can adjust their marketing and many other things. So it's understanding the preferences of the customers. And then when they have a digital twin, they can connect back to that customer. So they can say, for example, hey, I really want to give you a discount because you're like my loyal customer. And with the digital twin, you have a, you can have a discount to the new collection. Or you can have an exit to a limited edition collection that's coming up and they really want to share it with their like fans, first of all. Or you can have even a ticket to some show. So it gives a lot of opportunities just by the connecting with the customer and yeah, and uh, we find out that like email communications, so of course, every brand is doing email communications, has social media and so on and so forth. But the effectiveness of that can be much higher. Are there some, I would say, collaborations or partnerships that you have with certain brands that you can tell us a bit about? That's also interesting, of course. Uh, I can tell you about probably one of the most recent news, exciting news that we launched with this brand, Martina Spitlova, that is doing amazing. First of all, it's ethical leather. They're doing super cool designed leather jackets. We launched our first digital twin partnership in Selfridges in London. So when you get a jacket in Selfridges from Martina Spitlova, you can actually have the QR code, you can have it in your digital wardrobe and you can have eventually in the central end. So this is just like the latest collaboration we're super proud of. But then we have, for now, we have brands from UK, from India, from across the globe on the platform. And we're always expanding that. So like we have more than 60 brands in the pipeline and negotiations with us and over 600 that, that we're outreaching to. So it's a lot of work, but we, we're on the right track, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds exciting and, and congrats, by the way, with this collaboration. If you see, because when you start a business, you have a dream where you want to go. Do you have a like, vision how you would like to impact the fashion industry with your WIT team? Could you tell us a bit about that? 
for sure. I just don't know what to start because there are like many things. Okay, if there was uh, one, like, if there was one thing that you would ask you, Marina, uh, so how would your company help shaping the future of digital fashion? So what would you tell me? Yeah, I would say that our mission is to connect. So like basically SEMA stands for the stitch, right? So it's about connecting real and virtual. And I would say that I really want the future world to be like, for example, you can express yourself to the full extent. You have anything you wear, like you want to be yourself in multiple dimensions and multiple worlds. So you, just, you can just be yourself. So I really want to give this opportunity to everyone, but also helping creators to succeed in a new world, helping designers to succeed in a new world, and even the environmental solution. So brands, there is, I know, I'm sure you know that there is a big uh, problem in the fashion industry about like, they, they need to produce less, but they still need to keep earning. Like fast fashion right. is a big issue. <clears throat> Everyone, like sustainability is not just the best word, but this is something that's really important nowadays and we believe that with digital fashion you can still play like you basically the mass fashion mass production can come to digital so like in real world you'd be more ethical you like pick deliberately the items that you buy you use upcycle recycle but in digital fashion you can go crazy right you can change your outfits right. every single day every single minute and it's not going to affect the world so I really think it's a really big mission that everyone is having. Like it's a connected mission with the fashion brands and with companies, tech companies like us that are doing it. There are a lot of great companies that are working on this problem. And I think digital fashion is like one of the biggest solutions for this problem. Yeah. You, you look at fashion today, what clothes there are. There are big brands that get copied in other countries and sometimes it's even hard to see the difference between the original brand and then the copied brand or the fake brand. You talked already a bit about digital twins, but can you tell us a bit more how it seem you could like really ensure the authenticity of the items that people purchase? Yeah, for sure. Since digital twins are created together with a brand, and each QR code is connected to a serial number. We can tell a hundred. We can be a hundred percent sure that this is the real item. When someone purchases an item at a store, and even if they scan the QR code, they maybe even don't use it. But even if they scan it for the sake of making sure that the item is not fake, a SIM can be used for that. Just because right. it's impossible to get the combination of the QR code itself and the serial number. Okay. That's, that makes sense. That's totally clear. Yeah. But sometimes people can imagine, yeah, it's a bit also with all these NFT marketplaces and stuff when, uh, that they need to be sure that it's the item that they want. And, but it's on the blockchain. It's everybody. Everyone can have a look at it. So that's one of the advantages of Web3, of course. So people can also, I imagine, buy the digital fashion, but they can also sell it, I imagine, and a lot of people can buy it. How does that work? Do you have a marketplace where that can happen? For now, we have a marketplace where they can purchase it initially yeah. from brands, but we're working on the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where they will be able to resell it to each other and do something. I cannot tell you, I cannot disclose you like the, the whole thing, okay, okay. Uh, but they can do more with the items that they have before they sell. Okay. Yeah, I know because your company is still in the starting phase. I would say a lot of interesting stuff is arriving. Or there, is there anything else, Marina, that you can share with us that, is, that you can disclose about where you are heading with your business in, let's say, the next year or the next years? For sure. So even though we're, we're like two-sided product, right? Because we have businesses, we have fashion brands, we have video games, metaverses, but we also have consumers. But eventually our key goal is to give as many benefits to consumers as we can. So we're working on multiple features and you'll be seeing, I'm sure this year, we'll be seeing a lot released by us that help consumers to engage with digital fashion and make digital fashion actually useful. And they can do something with the items instead of just having pictures. So it's it gets even more even more than uh, they can be just used in the central and or virtual worlds. They can be, you know, there are a lot of things that can be done with those items. 
I know I said a lot, but nothing, but... <laughs> no, you can just talk about what we can talk about. A question I also have, because you're young, you have already this business. I guess there are also a few challenges starting up with this, with Seam. Did everything go according to plan or did you meet some challenges and how did you overcome them? Of course, I think every company meets challenges, no matter the sizes. We had some situations where, for example, Apple Store released the new rules just one day before the release for us, and we had to change oh. a lot of things. Like, there, there were nothing major, but we definitely had some obstacles. We had to go through a huge learning process in terms of how the tech should work, how the items should look from the perspective of both customers and the fashion brands. So we definitely did a lot of mistakes, but the key rule for our company, for our team, is to learn as fast as we can and yeah, and just to make the best efforts to, we can cut yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, you just, we, can, we, will, we, we will edit it afterwards, don't worry about yeah. it. I would just say it's by doing, it's learning by doing and failing forward and so on. One of the, I think, challenges that I think is there, perhaps not for you, but a lot of startups, they need to find the money. They need to find investors. How did that go for you? For you? Was it easy to find investors with your story or did you need to put the effort in? I know that you had already a business before, so you have all, had already this experience and perhaps a network. Was that beneficial to starting your second business that you had already a network? Yes. But the idea matters a lot. And uh, okay. I know that it, first of all, execution, the team, you can always pivot with the idea. But for me, the main challenge was I was looking for something in the fashion industry. And I was like, it was hard for me to find the initial idea. Let's put it this way. Uh, but then I, I don't know if I didn't tell you this, ah, cut it. But when I was three years old, I really wanted to be a fashion designer. That was actually the only way I was using Barbies. I just didn't like the clothes that they were putting on, on Barbies. So I was like designing the clothes from uh, like the materials that my mom had at home. And I also had an older brother who we used to play video games with a lot. Like if the parents were not home, we would play every day. So I, and I was watching trends and I was like, oh my God, like this is the perfect connection of the two industries I, tr I truly love. And when I had this idea and when I looked at the numbers, I was like, okay, I need to find an investor who would believe in that. So it was like a huge word before it. And then when I came up with the idea, I, it was a pretty random meeting. So I was actually not looking to fundraising at that exact day, but a friend of friends introduced me to the investor and I pitched my idea and he was like, I love that. Let's try it. And in the beginning, I was like, no way. Like you, you say, let's uh -huh. try right away. And he was like, yes. <laughs> And he didn't like, <laughs> so yeah, that was the leading group that is our investor right now and yeah. raised from them, but we had to prove ourselves like in every startup, you yeah, have to prove course. yourself. Yeah. So yeah, it's starting something. It's always exciting. And that was actually one of the questions I forgot to ask about. Yeah. The gaming, this was also one of your passions and it's also together with the fashion, but then it led to this new business. If you would, yeah, if we would ask you to give a tip for people that are listening to the podcast and they are interested in Web3 or in starting a business, what would be your best tip for them? Take in mind. And how to start? No, just, yeah, it can be about mindset or it can be about mindset. So there are people there that, that want to start their business. They have an idea and perhaps they have people around them, but they are hesitating to start or perhaps they don't know how to start, or perhaps they need to find the right help. Do you have like tips for that? Because you started a business twice. So what would you tell to those people? What would you advise them to do? The best advice to start is to start. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was saying you have to just find like the smartest way to quickly find out if people like your idea. Yeah. Step zero is to look at numbers and just make like an estimate of on if this business can be successful or interesting for you, because maybe you have a certain number you would want to make or would, you would want this business to have a revenue. And if it's not feasible, then probably you should work on the business model better. But once you have this idea and you're sure it's, not, it's going to work, just try going out there as soon as you can. 
this is what I did with the, like my previous company with desserts. I literally, it was like the money I was, my dad was like, I can give it to you for your master's degree or you can do whatever you want with it. But it was the money, right. it was your education. And first thing I did, we just produced like the cakes and we went to the different stores saying, hey, like we're launching this production. Would you be our, like, would you be, can we be your supplier? Would you want us to be your supplier? And this is the easy, like once I got four or five yes, I was like, okay, probably there is something in there. And same with digital fashion. Like we were talking to brands like day zero. Even if you have no product, if you're still working on product, there is always a way to get the feedback and shape the idea. Because I think that pretty much every idea gets shaped at the end of the day. And then, um, yeah, and then it's really important to expand your network and to find like-minded people who can give you advice or who just be your friends because it's really important who surround you because they shape your vision and they shape the way you look at the world. Exactly. Because, you know, a lot of people around me now, when you talk about, I talk about Web3 or the metaverse or digital fashion, even they will look at me like, what are you talking about? And you have also have to have entrepreneurs around you because maybe they understand, but they are not motivating you then. So that's a really good tip that you need to surround yourself with those like-minded people. Also, I like the fact that you say starting from day zero, you need to talk about this because most people wait until they build something and they are full of i would say doubts because they don't know that it will work so it's good to talk about it from day zero because then you have direct feedback and in business it's never a straight line i guess eh? there are always things on your path and then you need to pivot or you need to just direct well thank you so much marina for all your tips but if people want to know more about everything that you are doing with seam or they want to connect with you, where would you like to send them? Well, first of all, I don't want to say our website, but basically our website reflects what the company does best. But you can always find me on LinkedIn and connect with me directly on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to talk to new great people, have lots of ideas or just have questions. So feel free to reach out there. Yeah. Okay. So thanks so much again, Marina. It was great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely talking to you. And I really hope that it's useful for the listeners. <laughs> I'm sure it will. It's good to have people from all kinds of businesses with all kinds of experiences on the podcast. So the main thing is that we are always talking about Web3, about marketing, about business in web3 so i think it's really useful for people to listen to you make them think if you have given them some inspiration that they can use for themselves so guys if you're listening to the podcast and of course the website that marina mentioned and the linkedin profile will be in the show notes but if you're uh, listening to this and you think oh i know someone that can really benefit from this story from this podcast episode be sure to share the podcast episode with them. If you are not yet subscribed, of course, yeah, click the subscribe button because I would like to see you back for the next podcast episode. Bye.